Welcome back to another video about the 512 vector sequencer. In this video, we're going to be taking a closer look at the difference between gate, and specifically gate length, and len, or step length. As I've been using this sequencer more, and in particular, I've been doing some rhythmic exercises with it, one of the things that I found is that I was questioning the difference between gate length and step length. And as I showed in the first video, you can adjust the gate length. But similarly, you can also adjust the step length. So here's a question. If you can divide the step length and you can increase the step length, but you can also increase and decrease the gate length, why are there two? And when might you want to adjust one over the other? And that's what this video is going to look at. Before we take a look at the module, I want to talk a little bit about the underlying theory and uh, what is actually happening when we're adjusting step length and gate length. So here I have a, uh, just a, a basic rhythm that we can talk about. Let's say that we're working at 100 beats per minute or 100 BPM, and we have our steps set up as follows. We have a quarter note, a quarter note, an eighth note, and a dotted quarter note. Now, because we know how many beats are in a minute, we could figure out how much time, like in the human experience, how much time is each of these notes taking? So there's 60 seconds in a minute, and we know that we have 100 beats in a minute. So roughly each quarter note is going to take 0.6 seconds. 0.6 is kind of a hard number to talk about. So I'm going to multiply that times 1,000 to convert it to milliseconds. And you can see we get 600. Mm -hmm. So what that means is, let's say that we were to draw a timeline. And this is the duration of that note. And this is the duration of that note. And maybe there's a, a shorter one, the duration of that note, because an eighth note is half of a quarter. And then this dotted quarter here is maybe about that duration. Well, we know, based on the math that we just did, that this is going to be 600 milliseconds. This is going to be 600 milliseconds. This will be 300, and then finally 900. So the, the actual amount of time at 100 BPM that our song will take to play is 2400 milliseconds, or 2.4 milliseconds, if, if we are playing just this. Now, when we're setting step length, this is what we're setting. So when we pick a step length, let's say that our part is set to a quarter note, or 1 over 4. If our part is set to a quarter note, and we've entered a step length of 1, 1, 1 half, and 1.5 is how it would be noted in vector, then what's happening is at 100 BPM, vector sequencer is going to know, I'm going to allot 600 milliseconds for this step, I'm going to allot 600 milliseconds for this, so, so on and so forth. You get the idea. So vector sequencer knows, because of the BPM, because of the step lengths that we've typed in, that this is 2.4 seconds. Now, if you adjust the gate length, you're not changing the duration that vector sequencer is allotting for those steps. Instead, what you're changing is the articulation of that step. So recall that when we're talking about a gate, we're talking about a control voltage, and that control voltage has two states, high and low. So let's say that we dialed in our gate setting to be exactly at the midpoint uh, of the total amount that it could be. The control voltage value might look something a little bit like this. Right, so our gate would go high. We've told vector sequencer approximately halfway, so our gate would go high, and then low, and then high, and then low, and then high, and then low. So depending on what you're doing with this gate, you're most likely going to be affecting the articulation. Most of the time, I think, synthesis will route out their gate to an envelope. So let's consider uh, an attack release envelope. In an attack release envelope, 
you have a duration of the attack, and it'll hit sustain, and then you have a release. So in this case, the gate high will represent maybe our attack phase, and then we'll sustain, and then as soon as the gate drops, we're going to release. And then we're going to go do the same thing here. So we have attack, sustain, and release, and so on and so forth. I've added a little bit of patching here. So uh, the oscilloscope is going to show us a few things. The value in red that you'll see here on the graph is going to be what the envelope is doing. And the value in green, which is represented by this second patch cable, is going to be what the gate is. Let's listen to it first, and then let's take a closer look at what's happening. All right, I'm going to turn the sound off. I'm going to leave it running, though. So what's happening here is, in addition to part length, which we've already talked about, we also have gate. And uh, let me go ahead and drop all of this, drop all of this stuff down. So you can see that there is, there's absolutely nothing happening. If we add one click, you can see we start to get small little bits happening there. And the important thing here is, actually, let me, I'm going to change these all so that they are the same, so that this is easier to see. Okay, so I've made those all a quarter note, and if you watch the oscilloscope here, you'll see that we're getting little blips every quarter note. What gate is doing, I can, I can also bring gate all the way up. What gate is doing is it's controlling how long are we allowing that particular note to sound. So whereas length and rate control the amount of time we're allotting to each step, gate is the duration within that amount that we're allowing the note to sound. The note can't sound for longer than we've allotted with the step, but it can sound for shorter. And that's exactly what gate is setting here. Now, because I also have the envelope going there with it, uh, if you're familiar with envelopes, you probably know the release phase happens after the gate goes to the low. So again, depending on what you're doing and the sound you're going for, primarily what you want to think of gate, at, gate as is, how long do I want the note to sound? And in particular, if you're going to have a release, you want to think of also about how much time Am I leaving for that release tail to fall before the next note starts? So there's a couple more things about gate that I want to want to mention here. If you hold shift while you're turning this encoder, or honestly while you're turning any encoder, one of the things that are, that's going to happen is you're going to get exactly 10 clicks worth. So this, this gate value is 21 clicks from rest to legato, by the way, that upside down smiley face that's legato. If you hold shift, you'll get 10, which, which is roughly exactly half. Works on both the individual step encoders as well as encoder number nine. So if you don't know, if you don't have an idea or place, this is, this is a good start, is just start at the mid, midpoint. You can see here the nice thing about that, this particular envelope, I've got some release and some decay on, and so it's just, it's a great starting point. Gate length matters less if you're just using decay. So here I've changed the envelope, and I'm just going to have like a short plucky decay. And you can see that I can, I can drive up the gate length, and it doesn't really matter because we are only going to hear the sound for the duration of whatever the envelope is. I think the main idea here that I'm trying to get at is thinking about the difference between how much time you've allotted for a particular step versus the articulation of that step. All right, so two more things, and these should make a lot of sense now that we've explained the difference between step length and gate. What do repeat and ratchet do? So the answer is repeat basically just takes that step and it duplicates it. It's not going to change the step duration. 
and it's not going to change the gate duration. You're just going to get that many more. So for example, if I turn this up to four, and, and you watch here, you'll see nothing actually looks different. What's happening is this particular step, we're just repeating it. We're keeping the same gate length, we're keeping the same step length, and we're just getting four of them now. That's what repeat does. Ratchet, on the other hand, Ratchet is a divisor. And so if you watch over here, there it just went off. You can see we've got this rhythm going with the quarter notes. Ratchet is going to give us that same pattern of gate length, except it's going to divide it. Now, because, because I have my gate here set to basically half the distance, you can see that when we ratchet, similarly, we get a shorter gate, but we also get that same duration in the middle where the gate is low. If I was to turn the gate way up, when ratchet hits, you can see it's doing the same thing there. It's respecting my gate length, and it's just subdividing it. So the interesting thing here is you can experiment with different gate lengths and ratchet to see what you get. It's a it's fun. Sometimes you can't always anticipate it. One last thing I want to mention uh, before we go, let me turn off these ratchets, is this last form, this last click you see adds that kind of frowny face or upside down smiley face. Uh, what that symbol actually means is, is that's legato. So here on the sheet music you can, you can actually see that there's some of those marks. And in particular, what that means is that those notes are connecting. They're, they're joining. And sure enough, over here, if you watch, if I turn that off, you can see we have little blips. And what those blips are is they're defining when the note is changing. If, if you go into legato mode, though, one of the things that does not happen is the gate never goes low. And that also means that the gate never goes high again. So depending on what you're doing, this can matter. And... Let me give you a quick example here. So right now I have an envelope that's only a decay. So if I go to legato, I don't, I mean, there's something going on there. I don't really hear it. The reason why is because I have an ADSR envelope that I'm using and without any sustain, there is no gate high to re-trigger the envelope. If I turn up sustain, now we can hear something. That's just a general principle of uh, modular synthesis that's not specific to the vector sequencer.